Be lifted high. 
once and for all Once and for all Oh Lord, I lay it down Oh Lord, I lay it down Help me to lay today. I know what I let become more important than the Lord in my life. I know I have to lay those things down every day. Those things that I've allowed to become kingdoms in my life that take the place of the Lord and where he should be. This morning, this altar is open. What do you need to bring to him? challenge you and encourage you to bring those things to him today and lay them at his feet. What are the kingdoms in your life that you need to lay down? Why don't you bring them to him this morning? One 
God, I thank you this morning that you welcome us with open arms, that no matter how many times we bring you the mess we've made, you welcome us. No matter how many times we lay it down and pull it back and lay it down and pull it back, you welcome us. And you say, just bring it to me. And I will take it, and I will bear it, and I will give you peace and freedom. What an amazing God you are that you share that.
seated, please. Well, it's good to see you this morning. Uh, welcome to summertime at North Oak. We have just a slew out today. Uh, Dennis is in Kentucky. He's heading up the associational mission trip there in Boonville, Kentucky, uh, the second poorest county in the country. And this is our fourth year of doing ministry there. And so you pray for Dennis. He has the whole load on his shoulders this week. Brother Joe, our director of missions, was unable to go because of his uh, wife, Karen, who has cancer. And so you want to be in prayer for them, please. And then we have a multitude of others that are out for various and sundry reasons. Uh, and so uh, we're grateful that you're here today, however. And uh, we're going to have a good time as we share in the Lord. If this is your first time here today, we welcome you. And if you would uh, take a Connect card, it looks like this, and fill it out and then drop it off at the visitor center on your way out this morning. We have a little gift for you and we're glad that you have come today. And uh, you know, I don't know what all God wants to do today, but I know that every time we come together, he wants to do something, amen? amen. And he will do something today if our hearts are made open and receptive to him. So we're glad you're here uh, to share in that time together today. May the Lord bless us as we continue to worship. as we continue to praise his name.
the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on, Put on all, all of God's, God's armor, armor so, so that you will be able to stand firm against, against all strategies of the devil. devil. For we're not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. So, so put, put on, on every piece of his armor, so that you, you will be fully prepared. Stay alert and, and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. everywhere. Thank you so much for the music this morning. 
Amen. Amen. Father, this morning we are so grateful that this battle is not ours, but it is yours. And so, Lord, may we stand in our place, and that begins on our knees before you. And so, Lord, we do come to you this morning asking that you will give us strength to share what you have for us today. May we glean from your word those things that will further help us in our walk with you. And we'll give you the thanks and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, if you have your Bibles, I trust that you do, that you'll turn to 1 Samuel chapter 17. I'm going to be reading this morning from the New Living Translation. I've really come to like this. I believe that it speaks well of what God intended in his word. You know, if you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, then you know that God always has a track record. We all too often find ourselves facing a giant that we may find ourselves wringing our hands in despair, wondering how we're going to handle this, totally forgetting the many times that God has shown up. We forget how he operates in the past. And sometimes when we're facing that current situation, we wonder, where are you, God? And the Spirit of God reminds us, look back and see how many times I have been there for you. Well, you'll remember the 12 spies that were sent out by Moses to scout out Canaan land. And they came back with this report. While the cities are fortified, And there are giants in the land. We can't take those giants while we're like grasshoppers compared to them. Well, in case you've forgotten, we all have giants in our lives. And by giants, I'm speaking of what seems to be some insurmountable problem or issue. We try to fell these menacing giants when they make their appearance, but often they seem to only grow stronger with the passing of time. The giants that we face in life come in all forms. It could be a giant of some type of personal sin that you fall into again and again. Or it might be the sin of pride or envy or gluttony or lust or something else. Your giants may be one of addiction, something that has a grip on your life. It could be your health. So how do we deal with these giants? God's word gives to us an account of dealing with a giant. You'll remember the account of David and Goliath. I think we're all familiar with this in scripture. And so the Bible says, In 1 Samuel 17 and verse 10, I defy the armies of Israel today. Send me a man who will fight me. Yeah, here's Goliath making his strong remarks, standing before Israel, defying the God of Israel on this particular day. Then, Across the page in verse 16. For 40 days, every morning and evening, the Philistine champions strutted in front of the Israelite army. Do you know that is what Satan does? He struts in front of God. He struts in front of us, daring us to trust the living God. And so we find that there's a problem here facing Israel. What is going to happen? Well, let's follow the story in Scripture and take a look and see what happens. I want you to begin in verse 32, if you would, of chapter 17 of 1 Samuel. The 
Don't worry about this Philistine, David told, told Saul. I'll go fight him. Don't be ridiculous, Saul replied. There's no way you can fight this Philistine and possibly win. You're only a boy, and he's been a man of war since his youth. David was about 15 years of age at this time. But David persisted. I have been taking care of my father's sheep and goats, he said. When a lion or a bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, I go after it with a club and rescue the lamb from its mouth. If the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and club it to death. I have done this to both lions and bears, and I'll do it to this pagan Philistine too, for he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear will rescue me from the, this Philistine. Saul finally consented. All right, go ahead, he said, and may the Lord be with you. And then if you pick up in verse 40. He picked up five smooth stones from a stream and put them into his shepherd's bag. Then armed only with his shepherd's staff and sling, he started across the valley to fight the Philistine. Goliath walked out toward David with his shield bearer ahead of him, sneering in contempt at this ruddy-faced boy. Am I a dog, he roared at David, that you come at me with a stick? And he cursed David by the names of his gods. Come over here, and I'll give your flesh to the birds and wild animals, Goliath yelled. David replied to the Philistine, You come to me with sword, spear, and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Today the Lord will conquer you, and I will kill you and cut off your head. Then I will give the dead bodies of your men to the birds and wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. And everyone assembled here will know that the Lord rescues his people, but not with sword and spear. This is the Lord's battle, and he will give you to us. As Goliath moved closer to attack David, he quickly ran out to meet him. Reaching into his shepherd's bag and taking out a stone, he hurled it with his sling and hit the Philistine in the forehead. The stone sank in and Goliath stumbled and fell face down on the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with only a sling and a stone, for he had no sword. Then David ran over and pulled Goliath's sword from its sheath. David used it to kill him and cut off his head. What a victory it was as David boldly defeated the giant, Goliath, with only a slingshot and one smooth stone. As a result, the will of the Philistines was broken, and the Israelites were reinvigorated, and they stood in awe at what had happened. There are at least three things that we can learn from this Old Testament account about facing our own giants in life. I want, to know, I want you to know that, first of all, we must recognize that we all have giants, all of us. We all face severe hardships in life at times. Satan uses those hardships as giants to get our attention away from the things of God and his power over us. Sometimes what seems to be insurmountable objects is that giant. We all have problems. We all have temptations. And while it is true that we all have giants, it is also true that every giant can be defeated. Remember, Giants rarely start out that way. You know, Goliath was not always a giant. He was not always nine feet, six inches tall. He was once a baby. And then that baby grew into a child. And that child became a teenager. And the teenager became a man. 
And then the man turned into a giant. Giants in our lives often begin quite small. That's how Satan works, you know. He gets a little foot in, just enough. We crack the door open and he moves in a little more and a little more and a little more. And then we find that we have big sin in our lives. Started out as little, but then it was allowed to take root and to grow. That little sin was nurtured and fed and even encouraged. And then one day, it became a giant. And it said to you and to me, I defy your God. In time, little things become big things. We sometimes allow Satan to get in and we, we think that he doesn't have much power over us. And so we give him a little edge. Listen, you never give the, uh, the, the devil the edge, ever. Because he'll take full advantage when you do that. And so we have to first realize we all have giants, all of us. The question today is, how do we handle these giants that come our way. Well, we have to realize that the battle belongs to the Lord. Look at verse 47 of our text again. And everyone assembled there here will know that the Lord rescues his people. Notice that. The Lord rescues his people, but not with sword and spear. This is the Lord's battle he will give you to us. The battle belongs to the Lord. Well, God, I don't really want you to fight my battles. I want you to handle the big things. And God says, you don't understand, son. That that you face is a big thing. Every giant that gets in our face is a big giant. And it is there to rob us of our joy. It is there to rob us of our service to the Lord. And you know what? Often we're defeated by those giants time and time again. Because we try to face them in our own strength. And we lose. You see, you and I are not stronger than Satan. Do you understand that? There is a reason that he is called the prince of the power of the air. There, it is a reason that, that he has dominion over the face of this earth. He's a strong one, but he is not the all strong one. But he's stronger than us. And if you think you can fight Satan alone, forget it. You'll never be able to do it. He'll be a winner every time. You can't fight him off by yourself. Every giant that we ever face is that of Satan. Each one, though, just has a different face. This is the Lord's battle. It is not ours. I find it difficult sometimes to get around that. I find it difficult sometimes to, to say, okay, Lord, I know this is your battle, but really, I want to be a, a, a participant in it. You know, I want to be the one in there that, that slugs the, the guy. You know, I, I want to be the one in there that, that really has the advantage. But the truth of the matter is that we don't have the advantage. Only God has the advantage, you see. There's a reason that the scripture says that we can do all things through him. See, not us, but through him. And so we have to realize that this Battle belongs to the Lord. Well, okay, Lord. This is what David decided. Lord, I'm looking at this little stone and this sling, and I'm looking at this nine foot six guy standing in front of me, and I really don't think that this rock is going to do it. But you see, when that rock is given to the power of God, then it'll take care of it, you see. Whatever God puts in our hand 
to use against the enemy, make sure you know that God's behind it and it's his battle. And so we must attack our giants. Well, how do we do that? You know, Goliath had come into the territory of the Israelites. He had crossed their line and, and was taunting them. The Bible says that he was parading up, in front of down, up, and, up and down in front of them all day long, just taunting them. You know, if you ever tolerate a Goliath, he will take over your territory. Please understand that. And he'll come right up onto your doorstep. What does the Bible say? Satan is like a what? A roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And yes, he comes right to where you live. He comes right to your doorstep. That is why you never run from the giants. You never negotiate with them. You attack them. Look at verse 48. As Goliath moved closer to attack, David quickly ran away from him. Is that what it says? No. It says David quickly ran out to meet him. You see, God expects us to meet our enemies right where they are. You don't run from your enemy. You face him with all the power and all the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you take your stand. Whatever your giant may be, you have to force it into the day of light. Realize you can't defeat it in your own strength. So, as the praise team was singing earlier, we call on God. We get on our knees before him. You, you have to connect with the power source. And that power source is Christ. When you know Jesus as Savior and Lord, you have his strength, his power, you have everything that he has to offer. The problem is that we fail to access it. You know, it's kind of like, you know, somebody writes you a check for a million bucks and he puts it in a bank account with your name on it and, and yet you go without and you go without and you go without because you never write a check against it. And we Christians are just like that. We fail to write a check against the power that God has given to us. He has given us everything we need to face every enemy in life that we'll ever have. But we have to draw upon it. And we do that. We access that. Our ATM to Jesus, if you please, is on our knees. Call on God. Pray for his power. And then you attack. You see, once you're armed, then it's easy to make the attack. But you don't go unarmed against the enemy. There's never been a war won where we've gone unarmed. And there'll never be a spiritual battle won if we go unarmed. We must go in the strength of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, we have to trust in the Lord. You ever thought about what it is to trust in the Lord? To trust in the Lord is to have confidence. To trust in the Lord is to believe this. This is the word of God. We trust the Lord when we believe his word. When we take his word into our hearts. And we rely upon it. We depend upon it. For its power. For its instruction. That's what it is to trust in the Lord. You must not look at God in the light of the giant you face. But rather look at your giant in the light of God. You see, the light of God sheds his grace, his glory, his purpose, his power, everything we need is found in the light 
of the Lord God. So how do you get the light of God? How do we access that? Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He also said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father except through me. So, if he is the light of the world, and we can only get to that light through the Son, the Lord Jesus, then why don't we do that? Seems pretty simple, doesn't it? Doesn't it seem pretty simple to, to say to the Lord, you know, I, I want to access all that you have for me. Um, I want to be able to trust you in all things. Uh, I want to face every giant that comes my way in your power and in your strength. I want to do that, but I can't do it in this darkness that I find myself in. I can only do it through your light. Light dispels darkness, doesn't it? Light will dispel the enemy. The light of the world will dispel the enemy. So here's the formula. If I'm going to be a chaser of the giants that come in my life, then I have to have a relationship with God, the dispenser of light. And the only way that I can have that relationship with God is if I understand who I am in light of who he is. The Bible calls me a sinner. The Bible tells me that I'm in need of a savior the Bible tells me that there's nothing good in me, so there's not enough goodness in me to save myself. There's nothing that I've ever done that would qualify me to be a child of God, nothing. Except that I'm a sinner. The Bible tells me that Jesus died for sinners. Well, that includes me, and that includes you. In, the, in fact, it includes the whole world, doesn't it? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not, what? Perish, but have everlasting life. Well, that sounds simple enough, but how does that happen? Well, it happens through confession. Lord, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that. My life has proved that, that I am a sinner in need of saving. But how did you accomplish that? The Bible tells us that Jesus became the ultimate lamb of sacrifice. Do you know before Jesus came that every year, People had to show up on the Day of Atonement. And they would bring their precious lambs without blemish. And they would bring them to the high priest. And the high priest would go in and would slay that lamb and take that blood and sprinkle it with hyssop on the mercy seat. Every year that had to be done. Year after year after year after year. But then Jesus came the ultimate lamb of all time who would die one time for all mankind. And so he did. The perfect lamb without blemish went to the cross, shed his blood that I might be forgiven and that you might be forgiven. For you see, the only thing that God accepts is a sinner covered by the blood of the Lamb. See? And so when we have Jesus in our lives, then we become his. And now the light is accessible to me. See? I now am able to 
receive the light of Christ in my life. And when those giants come and they face me, then I face them off with the light of God's word. See? And so that light dispels the darkness that is there. And so I become a winner. And the giant becomes a loser, you see. It wasn't me that did it, but it was God that did it. As I allowed the light of life to come before me. I love what is said here in verse 37 of 1 Samuel. The Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear will rescue me from this Philistine. The Lord that did that for David does that for us. The same God of light and power. You see, there is no giant that comes our way that can overtake us when we're in the light of life, and that is Jesus, you see. The advantage is on our side when we have Jesus. The battle indeed is not ours, it is the Lord's, and we need to let him have it. Quit trying to fight your own battles. Quit trying to face down those giants by yourself, because you'll never win. But I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Isn't that right? You see, the battle is the Lord's. The light exposes evil. And when you have Jesus, you have the light. And when you have Jesus, you have the power. And God demonstrates that through us at every turn when Satan tries to face us down no matter in what form he may come. He is not a winner when we allow God to be in the way. God desires that. Let me ask you a question this morning. Some of you may have come in this morning with all kinds of battles that you're trying to fight. I don't know what it is. God knows and you know but you may have been just trying to fight it all by yourself. But you'll never be a winner that way. You see, God says, if you're mine, I want to go before you and I will fight your battle. Just trust me to do that. You let me be in the driver's seat and I will win for you every time. And he does. And you might say, well, preacher, I've been fighting this battle that I've been fighting a long time. And it just seems to get the advantage of me. And I'm going to say this to you. Every battle is not won on this side of glory. Please understand that. But every battle is won by God. He's still in charge. And one day, we will know when we're with him all the battles that he has fought for us. You let him do that. That's his desire, is to beat down your giants. But you've got to let him do it. The battle indeed is the Lord's. It is not ours. And so God forgive us when we try to do your work than only you can do. Father, this morning, we all face giants that come into our lives. Those giants show up in all kinds of ways, and sometimes we find ourselves beating against the wind, trying to win the battle when the battle is not ours to win. And so, Lord, I pray this morning that whatever giant 
we may be facing in our lives right now that we will allow the light of the Lord Jesus to overcome the darkness of that satanic face, whatever it may be. Lord, may we understand that you desire us to be winners as believers and not losers. And so God, in those battles that we face, even every single day, may we give them over to you that we might know your power, your strength, and that it might be to your glory. And so, Lord, there may be some decisions that need to be made here today. I don't know all the hearts of the people, but you know the hearts of every one of us. And Lord, I would pray today if there's one that is fighting a a battle that they seemingly can't win, that they would give up and allow you to stand in their place and fight that battle for them. Lord, for those that may be here today and have never met Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, that today they would believe that you truly did pay the price for their sin, that you truly did shed your blood for them, that they might be acceptable to the Father. And so, Lord, would you bring conviction upon the hearts that need to be convicted? And then the decisions that need to be made, may they be made today for your honor, for your glory, whatever they may be. Thank you for your great love. Thank you for your mighty power. Thank you for doing battle for us. And we give you the praise for that. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.